I'm uh, Brian Moon. I'm the senior web engineer for GoNews.com. It's a website based in Huntsville. Uh, I'm going to try to talk about how the internet works. It's a big, way up high overview. Uh, hopefully, it appeals to a lot of questions non geeks may have. You know that when you open your web browser and you type in a web address, something happens on your computer and you wait a few seconds and something comes back and you all of a sudden have something draw on the screen. Um, on the other side of that are servers, lots and lots of servers. Um, just for that one little thing you do for my website, it can involve five or six servers. For Google, it can involve hundreds of servers in seven or eight different cities just to answer your one search. So what happens? Well, <laughs> Ted Stevens said that the internet was a series of tubes. Uh, I'm trying to explain why he didn't use email. Um, he didn't have it quite right, but he was kind of close. People refer to their internet connections as a pipe. How big is your pipe? How fast is your pipe? Um, so things do sort of work in a pipe sort of fashion on the internet, but it's not an actual series of tubes. There's lots of terminology when it comes to when people talk about internet that everyone may not understand and know what it means and what's important to me and what do I not need to worry about or why is this breaking. Um, so I want to go try to go over some of that terminology. Bandwidth is one you hear a lot. Uh, your ISP talks about how many megs that you have, right? That's basically how much information can move across your internet connection at one time, right? At one given moment, six megabits can move. Latency is how long that it takes for that information to get from one point on the internet to another point on the internet. So when you hit enter or, or, or click, how long does it take for that information to get to Google's website and then back to you? So point of reference, in the dial-up days, bandwidth, you had enough bandwidth that a song could download in about 13 minutes, which is about three times, four times longer than most songs are nowadays. So just to download the song and listen to it, might not even want. And in terms of latency, things would take more than 400 milliseconds, which is uh, about 0.4 seconds, to get from one end to the other, which just sounds really fast, but in terms of internet time, that is forever. Um, on the other hand, broadband, uh, you can download that song in eight seconds. So you can easily download a song. If you don't like it, delete it, right? Um, what you have to be careful with is with bandwidth, with broadband, how much you can send up your pipe is much less than how much you can bring down your pipe. So that can cause problems if you're doing a lot of file uploads. Latency, on the other hand, with, with broadband is very, 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 very fast. Um, this is most important for gaming. If you have kids that play Xbox, you know, and they're having trouble, it could be a latency issue. So how much bandwidth do you need? Um, with broadband, pretty much however much you're comfortable paying for, right? If, 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 if you only want to pay 20 bucks a month, probably the 20 bucks a month broadband package from your ISP is probably going to be enough. Um, if you think you need more, buy more. Uh, in reality, it's not all about you in terms of how fast things happen on the internet. Um, there's a whole lot of other things going on uh, outside of, of your house and your ISP that are out of your control that you have to worry about. Uh, one of those is, is DNS, which is sort of like the internet phone book. When you type in a name in your browser, uh, your computer goes and asks DNS servers, what is the actual address, internet address for that name? Right? And then that's how it knows how to go contact on the internet. Another thing is routing. Your ISP then takes your traffic and routes it. And they send it to Atlanta, which then sends it to St. Louis, and then sends it to San Francisco, all around, all around the globe. Um, and sometimes this can be better for you, and sometimes it can be bad, because of peering agreements. Your ISP will have an agreement with four or five other companies that they may send you the way it's cheapest for them, not the way it's fastest for you. So you may be having trouble when it's, and it's, not, it's not in your control at all. So in summary, if you used to do web and email, you could probably use the cheapest plan that your ISP provides. Uh, gamers are going to want low latency, and that's not really an option on a plan you can have it or you don't. Um, upstream bandwidth can be an issue if a lot of people are uploading photos. You might not be able to do anything. Um, you can use speedtest.net to test your ISP's uh, bandwidth capacity to see if you get what you're paying for. I pay for six megabits. Uh, up, uh, down, and that's about what I'm getting. So um, I'm, I'm doing good with my ISP. A couple of troubleshooting tips. If your browser constantly says it's looking up something in the status bar, that's probably a DNS issue. It can't find the address for that thing. And if only some sites are slow and not, not 